Hi folks, it's Chris, welcome back. So this is a short video about two components I mentioned here and there, Paolo lenses and reducer. As we mentioned in one of the previous videos, the focal length of your telescope is fixed. Uh, we have the aperture and the focal length, and that's it. And if you are team visual astronomy, that's just fine. We concluded that in visual astronomy the magnification, or the field of view, so in other words the patch of sky you see through your scope, is calculated by the focal length of your telescope divided by the focal length of your eyepiece. Ok, example. My Newtonian telescope has a focal length of 750mm. In combination with a 10mm focal length eyepiece that will give me something like 750 divided by 10 equals 75 times magnification compared to the FOV of the human eye, of course. So to change the magnification, you simply swap eyepieces. Take a 10mm eyepiece instead of a 25mm eyepiece and you increase your magnification. But in astrophotography, we don't usually use eyepieces, but cameras. So the patch of sky we can image depends only on the focal length of the scope and the size of our camera sensor. The bigger the sensor, the more sky you can fit onto. And the bigger the focal length, the less sky you can image. Ok, we got that, but how to change that? How to alter the field of view within astrophotography? We could alter the size of the camera sensor, true, but there will be an upper limit. And even so, go too big and the sensor will be awfully expensive. No, but we can alter the focal length of the system, can't we? Yes, we can. Introducing additional lenses. Let's focus on the Barlow lens first. The simplest Barlow lens is a concave lens with a negative focal length. This lens is placed in front of the focal point, thereby it stretches the light path and thereby increases the focal length of the main optical component. You see that? The focal point is here, and if I place the Barlow lens here, the focal point shifts further to this point, and hence the focal length is the distance between the main optical component and the focal point, the focal length increased. And increased focal length means, uh, given the same sensor or the same eyepiece, a smaller field of view, so in other words, a higher magnification. Ok, for visual astronomy, if you have a 500mm scope and a 10mm eyepiece, you calculate the magnification by 500 divided by 10 equals 50 times magnification. So if you then introduce a 3x Barlow lens, the focal length will triple, in other words, 500mm times 3 equals 1500mm focal length divided by 10mm focal length of the eyepiece equals 150 times magnification. So 3 times the magnification of your first setup. You tripled the focal length, so you tripled the magnification, as ever you wish. And within astrophotography it's the same game, triple the focal length so given the same camera sensor, and you... Here are Jupiter and Saturn during the Great Conjunction in 2020. The field of view is 22 arc minutes by 16.5 arc minutes. Now, so if I add a 3 times Barlow lens, but don't touch the camera sensor, the field of view comes down to 7.3 arc minutes by 5.5 arc minutes. And 22 divided by 3 equals, surprise surprise, 7.3 and 16.5 divided by 3 equals 5.5. So like in visual astronomy, the height and the width of your field of view goes down with the factor of the Barlow lens. So you could call that an increased magnification as well. Ok ok, so the main purpose of a Barlow lens is to increase the focal length of our optical system. But there is another purpose you can use a Barlow lens for. See this ancient Newtonian telescope? It's not designed to be used for astrophotography. The focal point of the main mirror is placed inside the focuser tube. That is fine for a visual, because you need the focal points of the scope and the eyepieces to intersect, like this. But it is useless for astrophotography, because you can't place the focal point onto the camera sensor. You say, you can't reach focus. So you either need to take a saw and short the tubus of the scope, Yes, literally, or you use a Barlow lens. I mean, since the Barlow lens prolongs the focal length, the focal point will move out of the focuser tube. Using eyepieces you may then need an additional adapter ring, like this one, but on the other hand, the focal point can now be placed right up onto the camera sensor. 
you say you can reach focus now. Okay, the magnification factor of a Barlow lens also depends on the distance between the main lens and the Barlow lens. See that? If you shift the Barlow lens towards the main optical lens, the focal length grows even more, so you increase the focal length by placing the Barlow lens nearer to the main optical component. But now comes the trick. Because you attach the camera directly to the Barlow lens, there's only one position where you can reach focus. So in other words, the longer the tube of the Barlow lens between Barlow and camera, the bigger is the magnification. Long tube, high magnification factor, short tube, low magnification. I mean normally you buy a fixed Barlow lens, where the curvature of the lens is fitted for the given length of the tube and hence the given magnification factor. But there are variable Barlow lenses where you can detach or attach additional tube parts to vary the magnification factor. So that's another thing to consider when using additional lenses. Changing the place of the focal point also means changing everything else. Okay, okay, folks, so, second lens, reducer. It won't surprise you that a reducer is the opposite of a Barlow lens. And thereby it's a convex lens that is placed in front of the system's focal point. Sitting there, it will bend the light path even more and thereby pulls the focal point nearer to the main optical component. In other words, it will decrease the focal length. And following the same logic as with Barlow lenses, you will then multiply the factor of the reducer lens with the given focal length or the magnification. And my 750mm focal length used with a standard 0.75x reducer results in a 750x 0.75 equals roughly 562.5mm focal length. So again, Using this scope alone, without a reducer, with a 10mm eyepiece will give you 750mm divided by 10 equals 75 times magnification. And then adding a 0.75 times reducer results in 562.5mm divided by 10mm equals 56.5 times magnification. And that is, again, the same as multiplying the 75 times magnification with the factor of 0 0.75, directly resulting in the 56.5 times magnification. So, same, same. Okay, having a look at the field of view. Given the previous field of view of 22 arc minutes in width and divide this length, so 22 arc minutes, by the factor of the reducer, 0 0.75, and you get 29.3 arc minutes. This means you increase the field of view and thereby effectively reduce the so-called magnification. Okay, that's all clear and stuff. But it leads us to the question, how far can we go? I mean the upper and the lower border. Okay, let's first look at the magnification, so the Barlow lens. The higher the magnification factor of the Barlow lens, the higher the aberrations will be caused by tiny manufacturing errors and the overall image will get a darker aerial luminosity, of course, because you are spreading less light over the same sensor, speaking in astrophotography terms. And you are limited by the upper limit of your scope. See, as the resolution of your scope depends on the wavelength of the light and on your aperture, there is an upper limit of the resolution of your scope. Uh, so, thumb rule. Twice the aperture in millimeter is the maximum magnification. Okay, using a 500mm scope with 50mm aperture, together with a 10mm eyepiece gives you 50 times magnification, which is fine for a 50mm aperture. But using a 3 times Barlow will give you 150 times magnification. And with still 50mm aperture, that's way too much. The image will be blurry and there will be no more details showing up. Stay below that. Okay, so that were the Barlow lenses. And by the way, if you liked the video so far, maybe you consider leaving a little like down below. Yeah, it helps this channel grow and reach out to even more people getting into astronomy. Yeah, <laughs> okay. But without any further ado, let's continue with the second lens type. Okay, okay. Uh, we covered the upper limit. And what's on the other side? The reducer. In theory, everything sounds nice. Use a 0 0.5 times reducer and half in the focal length. That means not only a wider field of view, but also a much faster scope. Remember? In a previous video we talked about the fastness of a scope. Divide the focal length by the aperture and you will get the f-ratio. 
So my scope has 750mm focal length and divide that by 150mm aperture equals f5. So that's okay-ish fast. And f2.5 would be twice as fast, which in turn would lower your needed exposure time a lot. Cool, huh? But in reality, the maximum field of view that can be undisturbingly observed is limited by the scope's original focal length and aperture. Imperfections will grow exponentially and this is not a fun thing to observe. And remember, you won't change a f12 50mm aperture scope for 100 bucks into a f2 beast, no way. And just to be clear, there are systems like the Celestron Edge HD11 with f10 at 2800mm focal length and they can be downgraded to f1.9 around 500mm. I mean that sounds incredible, and it is. See Trevor's video about the Celestron for more infos about that. But keep in mind, those telescopes are made for f2. The overall quality allows for that. But if you take a drugstore scope for 100 bucks, you can never do that. Just keep that in mind. Okay, so normally, for normal beginner scopes, go with a 2x or 3x barlow lens for planets and moons and close-ups, cool. And a 0.75 reducer for wider shots, that's just fine. But never overdo it in both directions. Okay, okay, not much more to say. I hope you learned something, and I hoped you liked this video. And as I said, if you did, please consider leaving a like or even subscribe for more videos like this to come. And yes, now just take your new Barlow lens, get out your scope and have some fun. Besides all theory, that's what it's all about, isn't it? And so as always I say, please guys everyone, until next time here on Catching Photons.